as a State Minister of Foreign Affairs in Bangladesh. So uh, how do you actually evaluate this session so far? Uh, this is going uh, brilliantly well. Uh, every country is very appreciative about Bangladesh's ability to host such a mammoth uh, conference. These are uh, uh, one of the largest uh, of its kind, uh, 136 plus about 10 other associate members, uh, six or seven new countries uh, as an observer. Uh, and over uh, 1,000 participants, uh, 750 MPs. Uh, you know, especially uh, this is a remarkable achievement for Bangladesh because uh, off late the world uh, came to know uh, rather wrongly that uh, uh, there were uh, some of them expressed uh, some security concerns, but we all proved them wrong. It's somewhere to go. Uh, halfway through in the conference, but we are confident that the way we have started uh, will uh, finish it off well. And this has uh, given, uh, facilitated the world. It's not only just Bangladesh or about Bangladesh. Uh, you have seen uh, many issues are being discussed here. Uh, issues in Venezuela, issues in uh, you know this Latin America, issues in uh, some part of other Asian countries, uh, issues of Africa are being discussed. So we have facilitated that. But as a State Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, we are also uh, being benefited out of it. Uh, uh, myself and my foreign minister, uh, together we will be attending at least uh, 30 different bilateral meetings. Uh, we have concluded about 12 so far. We're looking forward for more engagement tomorrow. And through those bilateral meetings, the IPU has given us the opportunity to strengthen our bilateral relationship uh, with those countries directly. Uh, we, out of these 136 uh, and plus 12 or 10 other countries, we only have presence. Bangladesh have uh, embassies or high commissions to 60 different countries. So we don't have uh, our presence to another 70 countries. So this is an opportunity to meet them. So uh, yesterday there was a session about the youth parliament here. So you are also a part of the youth parliament in Bangladesh. So, but uh, so far the uh, mark is not satisfied like uh, the issue of the youth parliament. So how can we actually work for this? Well, unfortunately, I don't belong to the youth definition anymore. Uh, you know, I'm well past 40. Uh, but you are right. Uh, we don't have enough youth representation in our parliament, neither uh, anywhere in the world, so to speak. Uh, so, but we need to invest more in youth. And uh, the barrier, I think, here is uh, we need to invite and attract more youth into the political system uh, and in, uh, in politics. So youth will have to step out. Uh, no one is going to bring you out from your uh, cave or your home uh, to join politics so they will have to volunteer and we at the same time uh, have to make the environment a little more congenial and uh, also youth friendly youth friendly means you know they will be new they will have a lot of enthusiasm uh, but uh, we need to sometimes tame those enthusiasm because you know uh, politics uh, diplomacy takes time you need to have the patience and youth doesn't necessarily have that patience uh, as you can see if through many uh, you know if we lose a cricket match uh, from the very next minute uh, they will start Start criticizing but next day if you win you know they, they appreciate so but you can't have that mentality you know that is not good if you want to be a policymaker so it's a learning process but uh, I must uh, uh, confess uh, and admire Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's leadership because she gave a lot of opportunities to the youth way back in 2008 in the ninth parliament election and in 2014 parliamentary election the number of youth uh, in terms of youth definition is not probably below 40 but between 40 to 50, you have highest number of MPs compared to any other time in the history of Bangladesh.